Projecting Blue is actually you know, a cancer fighting organization engaged in cancer awareness, provision of free cancer screening, and also engaged in advocacy. We're engaged in some great behavioral research as well as patient navigation. And we also are the founder of Abuja Breast Cancer Support Group, which is the first uh, support group in, in the city, in Abuja. And through this support group, we've been helping cancer patients. We've been working very hard to put human face to cancer. Because especially in Nigeria and in so many African countries, cancer really doesn't have a face. So people need to start seeing people who survive this disease, people who are living this disease, and get to understand their own experience. So we founded the Abuja Breast Cancer Support Group as a support group helping people living with metastatic disease, people living with early cancer and all the rest. And right now we're trying to move the support group to a network of other support groups across the country. So this is essentially what Project Pink Blue have been engaged in. Thank you. And what are the main successes that you've um, achieved so far? I must really say we've been able to really change the way so many Nigerians think about cancer across the country because we've had programs that run not just Abuja in the city but also in Lagos but also in Enugu also in different part of the country and we've been doing this through awareness and we've really realized that you see awareness are all over people are really aware of cancer Nigerians are aware of cancer but the thing is that so many people are not accurately aware of cancer. These are two different things. You can really know, or you can be aware that cancer is a killer disease. That's awareness, right? But if you are accurately aware, you will also know that people also survive cancer. You know your risk factors, you know about your family history, you know about what you need to do in terms of lifestyle changes and all the rest. So this is what we do, especially not just to create awareness, but to create awareness accurately changing the way people think about cancer in a local and culturally adaptable way. So we translate materials, we work with Susan G. Komen in translating materials from you know, English to local languages as well. We've also done videos, you know, documentaries to educate our community about what they need to do. Some of the flagship programs that we've uh, really you know, done in the past that has really been of great and remarkable um, success have always been the World Cancer Day. So every year we mobilize over 5,000 people to walk on the streets in Abuja as World Cancer Day and then in, in Lagos as Pink October. And it has been really been remarkable because many people just look forward to it. Many people have used the World Cancer Day as their own annual screening, you know, because we don't have national screening in Nigeria, so people have to rely on sporadic screenings to really be able to get uh, you know, screen for cancer. And another very remarkable success we've achieved is when we implemented the Upgrade Oncology. Um, it's really a very innovative program because we realize the gap that is in, in when you create awareness and then people turn up with cancer and then they want to get treated and they don't get the better care. So my board decided to implement a program known as Upgrade Oncology. Upgrade Oncology was a medical oncology training. So instead of taking Nigerian doctors from um, Nigeria to the US or to Europe and otherwise, we actually brought the American doctors from US to Nigeria because it's, it's, it's more sustainable, it's, it's more, it, it gives greater return on investment. And that project was really, 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 really successful because we brought two medical oncologists from the U.S. and then to Nigeria and they trained about 44, you know, um, radiation oncologists and surgeons. And I'm very excited right now because most of the doctors in Nigeria, doctors in the U.S. have connected and they are really making a lot of, doing a lot of work, implementing some research work and stuff like that. I mean, other successes are, are other programs that we've done for patients. We launched the first patient navigation program in Nigeria. And right now the program is gradually tilting in other communities. Yeah, and Pink October, so many of them that we've really been able to use to change the narrative of, of cancer care. And most importantly, 
um, my organization, in collaboration with other organizations, you know, push for a major change, policy change in Nigeria. We don't have what we call like an institute for cancer or an agency for cancer. So what we did was to, you know, work with the legislators and the president just signed the bill to establish National Institute for Cancer Research and Treatment, which is also very remarkable. Right now, what we are really working towards is to see how we can increase our capacity in research, right? If you look about, if you look around and try to search for many information, especially about cancer in Nigeria, in Africa, there is very strong deficit of research in that community. So, and the population, cancer is increasing in that population, so there is a need for us to really do more research to know what we can do to reduce the impact of this, of this burden, and also what we can do to increase knowledge base of our people. I really want to share something with you right now. So many people are, are coming up with this, with this form of cancer known as Kaposi sarcoma, which is a co-infection that could also come from HIV AIDS and, and stuff like that. And also liver cancer, which is induced uh, from hepatitis. And so these are very strong areas that we need to do research on and get to know what we can do to reduce this burden. Yeah, so this is, this is really our vision for the future. One thing I would really want to say is, um, if you look at how, if you look at, look at like maybe statistics, look at cancer registry in the past, you really see that when you compare cancer burden, when you compare cancer burden in Nigeria and in some African country, several years ago and you compare the burden this year and you look at the burden in other parts of the world, especially in some Western countries, you realize that cancer burden is really high in so many Western countries. But the death, the cancer mortality is fairly the same, even more. So that's really to tell you the deficit in screening, in early detection, and you know, in treatment outcome and you know, capacity of the professionals, you know. So these are really very strong issues and I think it's, it's not just a challenge for just for people who are from Nigeria, but I think it's a global challenge. We can't be talking about global equity and access to medicine if we don't consider also other people who are, you know, in low and medium income countries. So I, I think I also want to make a call to everyone, you know, scientists, pharma companies, everyone, to really understand that for us to achieve global equity in healthcare, we have to consider people also living in low and middle income country. You see, a breast cancer patient in Dallas, and a breast cancer patient in Lisbon, and a breast cancer patient in Lagos is the same. The only difference is having access to care, you know, being able to afford this care and availability of this care. You know, and this is what we need to close if we really want to make global difference in cancer care. Otherwise, people will continue to die, you know, of this disease.